go. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, today we're going to be doing a little bit of ponding. And for ponding, you're going to need a few really simple materials, which is a net and then some sort of tray like this uh, filled with water to keep anything you catch in here. So ponding is a great way to explore the ecology of a pond or a stream or a lake or a river, whatever type of body that, of water that you're looking at. So right here, we're at the Hunt Hill Upper Twin Lake and we're checking out what sorts of things live in the water at the waterfront. Now, what we're mostly looking for is what is called benthic macroinvertebrates. And benthic means bottom dwelling. So we're looking for the things that live on the bottom of the lake and we're looking for macroinvertebrates. So macro means large and it's not like these things are going to be really large. They're going to be uh, fairly small, but large enough you can see with your eye without having to use a magnifying glass or a microscope. And invertebrates are just things that have no backbone. So most of the things are going to be things like insects that live in the water for their lives or at least part of their lives. So to do this, uh, you have to know some skills with your net. Uh, you have to have a net that has some pretty small holes so you don't have everything fall through it. And what you're doing is you're really just tapping the bottom. When you tap the bottom, you're going to uh, make any of the things that are living on the bottom get stirred up a little bit. Uh, you don't want to be scooping because you're going to end up getting a lot more uh, things like muck and rocks and that sort of thing. So I'll show you how I'm going to tap and hopefully we'll find some critters in here. So I'm just tapping along the bottom here. There's lots of little things like uh, plants that they might be hanging on to and debris that fell into the lake. And I'll bring it up close so you can see what's in here. So we've got a little bit of muck that's in there, but then I can pick out the muck and I can sort through and see if I have any critters. I don't see any critters in this batch, so I'm going to clean out my net and do another swing. So we'll check out where on this side. This project does take a little bit of patience because you don't always get something right away. We do have some things in here though. Here's a little snail and I'll get that put into the water. Oh, that might be another snail. So there's some snails. But I don't see a whole lot of other little critters moving around. I'll do a couple more swipes and then I'll show you the things that I caught before. All right, so here are all the things that I've caught so far today. Uh, I've been keeping them in two separate bins because some of these creatures are predatory, so they would try to eat the other ones. So I separated out all of our snails into this uh, bin over here. So we've got a few different types of snails. We have this large snail and we have a medium sized one that keeps getting unstuck. And then we've got all of these snails on the side here. So we can use a key to help us identify what sorts of snails that we've got. So on my key, we start from the very top and it asks if it has shells or no shells. So for the snails, we've got shells and it asks if it has a single shell or a double shell. A double shell is what you'd see on like a mussel or a clam. So we're looking at a single shell. And we've got three different options here. We have our pouch snail, which has a spiral and an opening on the left. We have a gilled snail, which has... So the reason that we do ponding, besides it being really fun to see all the critters that live in the lake, um, is that it is also a great way for citizen scientists to monitor their waterways. So 
On the back of our key here, we have a lot of different species that can be indicator species. And an indicator species is something that shows us um, whether they are uh, pollutant tolerant or intolerant. So an intolerant or a sensitive species is not going to live very well in um, a polluted lake. So things like a stonefly nymph or a dove's synthfly larva are going to probably die out if you have pollutants in your lake. Uh, then we have on the other side things that are tolerant of pollutants. Those are things like pouch snails and leeches, uh, and those can live in just about any sort of environment. Now, if I had caught a whole bunch of different things, I'd be able to figure out uh, how polluted our lake is just by taking a look at what we've got. However, we don't have a whole lot of species to compare, so this isn't going to be a full comparison today. But I know that we have plenty of snails in here. We have guild and orb snails. And we also found a pouch snail, which uh, both are semi-tolerant or tolerant of pollutants. Um, now, we did not find many of these. We found a caddisfly larva here. Um, but we did not find many of the ones that are um, very sensitive or semi-sensitive. However, I know that in the spring when I did this activity, uh, I did find lots of dragonfly larvae, uh, damselfly larvae, mayfly larvae, things that tend to be in that semi-sensitive -sen um, to pollutants area. So when I do a full evaluation, we tend to find that this lake is just uh, semi-sensitive to pollutants, which means there might be some pollutants in there, but it is not a polluted area. Thanks for watching and I hope you get a chance to investigate a waterway in your area.